Was there ever any moment when you thought, you know, what if this is the end of dating, you know, as we know it? Did you did you have that kind of uh, dark thought, or did you just think, okay, uh, we're going to figure out how to move forward? You know, I. Uh... I have fundamentally always known that this is such an essential thing for humans. It's existential. Finding love and relationships and connections is existential. So I don't think I ever for a moment um, thought about this being the end of dating. I certainly worried about what the short-term volatility might be because at the end of the day, dating requires a certain um, you know frame of mind and uh, a certain outlook and the anxiety and the shock and sort of the, the news that was uh, going around. Uh, it was certainly going to have a, an impact to how users behave, that much I knew. Uh, but I, uh, not for a second, I thought this is going to be uh, an, the end of people's quest for love. It never is. Uh, you know, speaking personally, and again, we're trying not to make this all about me. But you know, I, you're right. In that, in that first period, I wasn't going on the the apps, the, the dating apps. You know, I'm on. Uh, tender and hinge myself, and I wasn't in the right frame of mind to do that. Um, and it looks like other people weren't either in that first quarter. But then by, you know, the summer, late spring, summer, fall, you know, uh, people were certainly in my circles were back on. Um, and that And that seems to be reflected in your data as well, right? That's exactly what we saw in terms of activity. The first couple of weeks when the news was just, um, you know, so shocking around the world, we saw a negative impact to um, all of our activity and uh, KPIs across all platforms. Um, but, you know, by the time April came around, things started um, ticking back up. And by summer, uh, it was a whole different, uh, different world. I believe starting then, around April, you began rolling out uh, different products uh, on the apps to to make it easier for people to connect virtually. So one-on-one -on -one live capability, I believe you began rolling out in April across your portfolio. Um, how did you decide to do that, and, um, and, and what's the effect of it? Yes, so um, we started pivoting our product and our marketing right out the gate um, once the lockdowns came about. We knew uh, we had a lot of people calling us about what this all meant, and um, so some of the early pivots were about getting uh, people comfortable, giving them more information. We uh, launched hotlines. Uh, we saw this uh, interesting trend where suddenly people were um, not just looking for people in their own area, which is normally what happens on dating apps, but they were reaching out to Italy. Like people in the U.S. were reaching out to Italy and Spain, and we um, have a few features that allow people to do that uh, that you've got to pay for. We made it all free and available, for instance. And then the big one, which is, okay, if people are going to be um, less willing and able to go meet in uh, the real world, what does that mean? Video obviously became such a big part of all our everyday lives at work and in every other way, it made all the sense in the world for it to be part of the uh, platforms. And so in addition to rolling out live video on our platforms, we also started giving, um, uh, providing users uh, you know, things to do. How do you do a good video date? Is it okay to cook together? Or, you know, what are sort of the icebreakers that you do? And so a lot of our product evolution during those um, few months were in that, in that zone. And we've seen a real adoption of video, which shouldn't come as a surprise just by virtue of how we've all evolved. But by summer, about half of our users were already telling us they had been on a video date. And uh, that was a big, big transformation, I think, for our category and our platforms.